Hey guys, this is going to be an overly simplified tutorial on something which is usually far more arduous and daunting than it probably should be. Um, this tutorial is going to go over how to get animated World of Warcraft models into Tabletop Simulator. The things that you're going to need are World of Warcraft if you want to get the models from there. You don't need a subscription to it. You just need the, the files from World of Warcraft downloaded. Uh, next thing you need is a WoW model viewer. You just find it on Google, download it. Um, and then you're going to need some sort of modeling software. That's where it sounds like it's going to be daunting, but you're literally just going to import the file so that it'll generate the textures out of your exported files from model viewer. So you'll, I'm, I'm going to be using 3ds Max, 3D Studio Max. Um, and the next thing you're going to need is Unity, and I'll tell you the exact version when we get to that phase, or you can just check the description. And lastly, you're going to need Tabletop Simulator. So a lot of, there's a lot of big steps, and I'm just going to kind of go over it. So the first thing I did was I already opened up Model Viewer, because it, since it is like a 32-bit version, and World of Warcraft is such a colossal-sized game, uh, it takes a minute to load. So you just, uh, once you open it, it's like, do you want to load World of Warcraft? You set yes, and it takes a minute to do. Uh, next thing you're going to do is go to View, and then View NPC. This also takes a second. You can see it's freezing. Uh, it's going to take a second. One thing I recommend to do is instead of trying to type inside the search bar in a second, I recommend finding the word that you want to do, copy it, then paste it. So as an example, if I start searching right here and start typing in, like, let's say, treant, because this is what I have right here loaded up. If I start typing T, R, E, it's going to start filtering all the monsters with the letter T and then everything with T, R. If you just have it already selected, like this right here, it's just going to immediately load. It's so much faster than manually typing. I recommend doing it that way. Looking up maybe on, like, Wowhead or one of those websites you can find um, the name of the monster. So let's say I've got this and you're looking for a specific version of the tree in, right? Maybe you want the green version I saw, you know, you might be able to find it there, but more than likely you'll be able to find it in your skins. So let's kind of go through these. I want to rip this one right here out. This one looks like it would match the environment that I want to put in my guy. So we're going to go to file, export model, and you have to do FBX if you want animations. I'm pretty sure OBG, OBJ does not do animations. Um, for the longest time, I was trying to figure out how you get your, your textures and stuff. However, if you just export this out, it'll give you your animations and your OBJs. So I'm going to create a folder on my desktop, which is overly messy right now. We're going to call it Treant because I've already got that copy and pasted. So I can just call it that. So we're going to call it Treant. Save. Um, you don't want like all of these animations. Let's just get like the ones that you want because it's going to be giving you like 3,000 FBXs. So what I mean by that is it's going to give you the raw FBX with just like the T stanced like model, which is your rig. And then it's going to give you other FBXs, which have all the animations for these. And I'm going to show you how to get all those working. But for this, we're just going to get like stand one. I guess. I don't know. This is stand zero if you look below, and this is just him there. So I'm going to do stand one, because we'll see what that looks like. Okay. Export successfully. We're done with model viewer. If you ever want to go in here and do your characters, uh, you want to build like a character, you want to like do something for your like Dungeon and Dragons, and you have like your whole full-blown character, that's like a whole other tutorial, and it's a lot more complicated, because then you have like weapons that have their own bones and everything, and you're going to have to basically position them in your character's hand, which is in the rig itself, and it's just overly complicated. When you have something that's very simple, like just a single rig like this, and you don't have to attach any weapons to it, it's much easier. Okay, let's minimize this. We're going to boot up 3ds Max, and for this tutorial I just downloaded a student copy. Anyone can get a demo copy or student copy of 3ds Max. My messy desktop. <laughs> All the models and textures and stuff like that on there. Alright, so this is booting up. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, we're gonna open up that folder. Let me see if I can find it. I can't move this window. It's gonna take a second to load. Alright. Here we go. 
So, like I said, I just downloaded a student copy just for the sake of this tutorial. And uh, it's still loading up. You're not going to do really anything inside of 3ds Max. And if we get further down the line and developing like a better pipeline for this, you might not even th need 3ds Max. Okay, so I want to pull this aside and find my folder right here. This is going to take a second to do, but this is my folder. So like I said, it gave you the general model with the rig and everything, and then you got the tree end, which is stand one, which is the animation. All right, so you're going to do this. You're going to bring it in here, import. You just drag and drop it in there, and this is going to take a second. Sometimes it takes longer than others, like if you have a big old character. So I imported it in. The first thing it did is it generated this FBM, which is all your textures. That's all you needed with 3ds Max. I don't know, you could probably use like Maya, you could probably use Blender if you don't want to use it, um, but I only know from experience that this will work with, like 3ds Max will export the textures out. So we're done right now with 3ds Max, and you can, you can see right now like all the rigs and everything, and the hands, and uh, if you had your own character and stuff, it would look like that, and you'd have to put like, you'll see. We're done right now. We're not going to do anything else in here. Next, we're going to boot up Unity, and I've already got it downloaded. The version that you want for Unity is, and I'll show you when I load it up. You're going to need Unity Hub, and if it doesn't show up in Unity Hub, I recommend going to Google and finding... Uh, I just named my project file TTS, which stands for Tabletop Simulator Assets. This is the version you want, 2019-1-14-F1, and this is as of currently. Sometimes the, the plugins and stuff that the Berserk Games Tabletop Simulator developers use, they might upgrade it and they'll tell you what versions you need, but right now, currently, as of like now, this is the version you want. Google 2019-1.14-F1 or... 0.14 or something like that. F just stands for final. So we're going to load this up. Loading very slowly. Okay, it's compiling. This is all good. So we need Unity because with Unity you are going to import your FBX and stuff and then you're going to basically bake all that information down when you set it up into a .u asset which is what tabletop simulator can use so you can see I've done some characters and stuff here and yada 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 so we're going to set up our I named mine asset bundle you don't have to name an asset bundle I don't think so you'll be left with like assets um, so I just created all these folders because it's easier um, you don't have to do this I know that you guys are sometimes like micro following like how to do these things and like I just did this so with models I put all my models in there so let's go ahead and get our stuff here we have our model of a treant boom our treants in we're not done this is our treant we're not done so I'll go ahead and drag him out and then I want to move some of these guys out of the way want to move them and then I want to position him one 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 all right so he's already good he's he's nice so we got our model in there he's not animated this is your generic T stance for like this guy right okay so next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go back and we're going to import the texture that we exported and I created a folder for dough for whenever we do different characters you don't want to just put all your textures in one thing it's good to have like the hierarchies and stuff but this isn't like this is for like characters because you're gonna have like different armor pieces which have their own unique textures this guy has one single texture which any normal creature will probably only have that okay so we have our int skin red alright so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this on select him first drag it on and we're not done because this doesn't look good he's very shiny he doesn't look like wood we're gonna make it look like World of Warcraft so when we click him it's going to generate the material folder you can create all this yourself if you want So click this you don't have to this will do it too you see I've got my folder all dragged out uh, what we want to do is standard specular two-sided 
Now you guys don't have standard specular two-sided and I will provide this for you. First we'll do standard specular and you're going to see what is going to happen when I go to two-sided and other, when I just go with standard specular. So we're going to go with uh, cutout because that's what we need for the leaves. Select cutout and this is how you make it look more like World of Warcraft. Go like that and then smoothness turn that down to zero and that looks a lot more like World of Warcraft. So you see how like you can't see through the leaves? That's because we need it on, uh, it's called backface culling which is part of shader code and I've already got it compiled and made. So when you do this it'll show it on both sides and it'll render out in TTS, Tabletop Simulator like that. Alright, so we got our model, we got our material and texture and everything set up. What we need to do now is we need to actually get the animation set up. So let's go to animators and I'm going to go to tree and animations and just import our FBX. Okay, we're good for right now. What we're going to do is we're going to create something called an animator, animation animator controller. We're going to name this, um, just copy and paste, treant animator. We're going to go in, select our model here, and our model is using the avatar treant avatar. We don't want to do that because that's what we, we, we want to use the avatar that's coming with the animations, right? That's basically your rig. Um, so we're going to go into right here. You're going to have a little arrow and this is going to be on your animation FBX. You're going to drag this over it right here. If you're missing animator, you can add component and type animator and it'll find it. So next we're going to need a controller. We're going to drag and drop the controller in there. However though, it will not play because all you right now have is the animation and the controller for the animation. You need to actually put the animation inside the controller. So we can literally double click tree and animation. And if you notice, you're gonna have all these tabs at the top. You can go between the two. All right, so with this folder, with this FBX still expanded, drag and drop stand one. This is your animation file itself. So you have the FBX, you have the animation, and you have the rig for it. So now if we go like this, if you click play, it'll play one time. We need to make it so it's gonna loop the animation. So you're gonna click the FBX of the animation and click loop time, which is under animation tab. So you have model animation. Now when we click play, it should play. Yeah, we gotta apply. We gotta click apply over there. So go to scene and he's animated. Very cool. I'm kind of regretting stand one. I probably should have gone with stand zero. <laughs> Treants are supposed to be very um, idle and inconspicuous and not like looking around like that. So I'll probably go export the animations of one or zero out, but for now this suffices. So what we want to do is we want to get it so that we can get it working in Tabletop Simulator. So let's go with um, Asset Bundle. We want to create a folder called Prefabs. This is just what I call it, but in game development, this would be your working game ready asset called a Prefab. So you can see I've already got a bunch in here. So all you want to do is take your treant that you see in the hierarchy up here. You can see it's called hierarchy. It's on the left. At least it is for me. I think it is by normal as well. Just take it, drag it in here, do the original prefab. So when I drag that out, it's going to it's going to just make a copy of that basically. See, they're all right there. All right, so we we'll delete that one. We don't need him anymore. Delete. Oh, um, one thing you could do, this is optional, is you could create custom collision. One of the things I like to do is I don't want my models to all collide with each other, so I can do custom collision. Um, I'll show you really quick how to do that. However, if you don't do collision, Tabletop Simulator will generate collision on like the basically the polys on this. It'll automatically generate the collision, which is fine. It works, but I like it more custom when I'm doing characters. So I can like have things on top of them and all that. Anyways, what you would do is you would do like this and then box collider and then um, I should probably not do this on the prefab. I should probably select the thing. Go in here, do like box collider as an example. You're not seeing the collision right now, but when you click edit collider, you'll see it right here and you would just like move the latices, the control points, move them down, 
and around and stuff and you can move it so it's very small so anything above this is not going to be like collided with so you could put like other characters on top of this or really important i have like a health system that i do i'm not going to go too much into it let's just get rid of this and export it out um, so i'm going to remove this component so now we're left with that our tree is what we want we want to select our tree and prefabs go to none and then i just click we can do new Sometimes it lags like it is right now. It's not typing. It's totally fine. I don't know why it does that, um, but you just got to click it again. Click new, and now you should be able to type. And we're going to call it Treant. That's all we need to type. And then this is for your asset bundle. And then what you're going to want to do is right click your prefab, build asset bundles. Um, I forgot to tell you, you're going to need the tabletop simulator. It's like a package that you're going to basically import and it's going to be in the description. Um, you can always just follow the directions for that, but you're following the tutorial. So um, there is like a package that you're going to need so that you can build this. So it's literally just download the zip, import the files from their thing on Tabletop Simulator. I'll link it in the description. Okay, so what we're left with is the US set. So we're going to go with Treant. I just did search and did Control V as soon as I opened up this, and we're looking for Treant Unity 3D. It's called um, Asset Bundles. I think this is it right here. I thought it was called a U Asset. Dot U. Wasn't this? Is this what it was called? Yeah, I think this is it. Open file location. Yes. So it's going to render all of them out. The only one I want right now is Treant Unity 3D. I always drag this straight to my desktop because it's easier than trying to navigate through C, Users, Grams, TTS Assets, and Asset Bundles. It's kind of, it's like so many folders. I just put it on my desktop. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna launch Tabletop Simulator. Just give this a second to load. All right, and then click create single player and I've already got something created but I'm gonna load this up you can create a new table if you want just for testing purposes next thing you're gonna to do is go to objects components custom and again this is as of the current version asset bundle because that's your asset right so you're gonna go with main and I put mine on my desktop so I've got desktop selected and let's look for Treant right here. Upload it to the cloud. It's just absolutely recommended if you want anyone else to see it. Cloud, upload. I do figurine and then I do wood. And then import takes a second. And there we go. There's our model from well right now. Remember when I said the geometry will be like this when you hover over it? That might be fine for you. For me, I like it when like the collider's at the base down there. That way I can put things like above the characters, like this right here. I've got this gym, so I can like put the character like that, and then I can have like it's it's just a health system that I was talking about. If we try doing that with like this, it'll be like way above him because it's like resting basically on top of the tree end. See? So that's why I do my colliders like that. But it's totally optional. Well guys, that's how you get like models inside of um, from WoW to Tabletop Simulator. Have fun with your D&D games or however, whatever you're going to use it for. Peace amigos. If you like this, by the way, like it and follow, I guess. Peace.